Hi, welcome back. This is Paramedic Project. Uh, Join me today, first guest presenter, uh, friend of mine, friend of the show, Tom Campbell. He's a doctor that's interested in eyes, mm-hmm. and he's here to present a um, couple of the big ticket items uh, for paramedics around uh, eye care in the pre hospital environment. So, Tom. Perfect. Well, thanks a lot for having me on the show. I work in one of the big eye casualty, eye emergency departments in, um, in this city. And I think that there's two things that paramedics should really know about the acute care of eye injuries. And that's penetrative eye injuries, number one, which we'll talk about today. And then acid and alkali burns, which we'll talk about in the future. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Now, the thing with penetrating eye injuries is that they're potentially a devastating injury that can lead to loss of the eye and even loss of the other eye. And that can range from being very subtle to being incredibly dramatic and horrifying. Right. Now, what we need to think about is, is, is the mechanism of injury when we arrive on scene suspicious for the kind of injury that could lead to an intraocular or penetrating eye injury? Now, those kinds of things are metal on metal activities, so you're banging a hammer onto something, you're grinding. With those kinds of high speed metal on metal activities, you have to think that something can penetrate the eye because little bits of metal can shoot off and go yep. inside the eye. Now, the other type of penetrating eye injury is the really gruesome one with things sticking out of the eye that's really obvious. Now, with first aid to the penetrating eye injury, A, you need to think about it first so that you make people at the hospital where you're delivering the patient aware of it. And you need to think about what kind of hospital is appropriate for this person. If you think they might have a penetrating eye injury or an interocular foreign body, you have to start thinking about taking them to a place where they can fix that, a yep. hospital with ophthalmology there. Transport to definitive care. Exactly, yep. exactly. Now, what you need to do is when you're suspicious of a of penetrating eye injury or you know that they're penetrating eye injury is prevent further injury to the eye. And the best way to do that is to protect the eye. Now, the best way is with a pre-prepared eye pad which you place across the injured eye. Now, the best way to do it is to make certain you put tape onto the pad before you place it across the eye, because otherwise you end up fiddling around, putting it, and then get, trying to get tape to do it. So put the tape, two pieces, on it, straight onto the injured eye, and then you can just hold the tape down. Now the eye is protected. But lots of times you won't have an eye pad available to you, what you can do is use any kind of cup. So here you know, I've got a styrofoam cup, but any kind of plastic cup where you just cut it to the right size, put it over the eye, tape onto it, and you can just tape it into place. Now this is a perfectly appropriate uh, eye shield. Now what it does is prevents further injury to the eye and further compression onto the eye. So you said then cut it to the right size. So yeah. what, what is the right size as far as you're concerned of, of that? Is, are we talking length we're talking diameter of the cup do you cut it to or so the main thing is is that it can't be placing pressure onto the intraocular foreign body now if you've got a pencil sticking out of your eye this is going to be no good yep. so what you can actually do is if you have nothing big enough to go over it is you can place this over the intraocular foreign body and then put this into place so the actual thing is sticking out of the eye yep. now most of the time an ordinary cup is good enough for most penetrating eye injuries and it really doesn't matter how big you can't be too big really sure. yeah, but yeah. you can be too small hmm. and what about the actual size of the the size of the um, size of the cup so it's important like if you have a, 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 a pediatric patient for example it's important that as long as we're not actually pushing on the soft tissue of the eye is that right we want that to sort of go on the on the hard sort of that's exactly um, right. So you, you've got a, a big rim of, of hard tissue around here, that's of bone in fact, that, that as long as you're outside the eye itself, so you're not touching the eye and putting any pressure on the eye, yep. it should be good. Now an ordinary size cup is good enough for anybody, even for children. Being too big is better than being too small. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, Penetrating Eye Injuries with Tom Campbell. Join us next episode where we're going to be talking about acid and alkali burns to the eye. Exactly. Uh, the second uh, second big topic on uh, on eye trauma in the pre-hospital environment. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks. See you again. Thanks for joining us.